guys, what's up? Matt here from Loon Outdoors. Today we have a little caddis pattern. I'm going to be using the FW520 size 8 from Ahrex. It's, a, it's touted as an emerger hook. I like it as a competition style hook. I'm going to be using the 50D Beavis GSP threads, um, which is my go-to, and some .20 non-lead wire. Uh, obviously, we like to keep everything as green as possible. If you guys feel the need, you can use the nasty lead, although it's being banned in uh, most of the states that I fish in right now. So we're going to take a uh, ton of wraps here. You can count them if you want. I don't, um, just because it's going to vary by hook by hook. So looks to be about 15 wraps of 0.20 non-lead to me. Um, once I get those ends all stabilized and in there where I want them, We'll go ahead and start our thread. I do position this. I want to leave a little bit of room up by the head um, where there won't be any weight. And we'll just go from there. You can see I'm wrapping back over the top of my tag. And that keeps your thread from slipping in on the uh, initial pass there. So it'll help you kind of lock everything in and sandwich that non-lead wire in. Now I'll go ahead and go back through and it creates a nice strong bond without separating your wire. I go back and forth quite a few times. Durability is an important thing for me with all my flies. And this is some uh, premium fluorocarbon. <laughs> it was just what I had. Um, I like to use 5X. You could use a thicker one if you like. It doesn't need to be uh, incredibly beastly. Um, that was the first spool that came off of uh, my tippet stack. So that's going to be our, our ribbing for this fly. And next up, we're just going to use a little bit of scud back. You can vary this. This happens to be um, kind of a brownish color. Um, and it's not as opaque as some of the other ones. But uh, it's kind of an olive brown. So it's just going to simulate the tan side of the caddis. As you know, most bugs will have a light and a dark side to them. And I just like to accentuate that quite a bit. So you can see I trim a V on the end of that, and that helps me pull that nice and tight. And I just make sure this stuff's wrapped in really well. Um, this is some Cleese Custom Mix. Realistically, it's a blend of two original hairline dubbings. It's an olive an insect green, and a light olive ice dub. You get some really cool blue-green UV hues off of the ice dub, and the segmentation between the, uh, the olive and the insect green really play in well and create a little bit more depth to your bug. I also do this in a cinnamon color as well. Um, I do like the, the, you know, the original hair dubbings. I think they become far more translucent being a natural fiber. And it really creates a great looking fly at the end of the day. Obviously, if you go kick over some rocks and you find free living caddises or net builders or whatever, you know, caddis, you can adjust the formula to meet your needs. That's just mine for fishing up here in my neck of the woods. So you can see I create a little thread area um, up front there. Kind of got to work around a few things there. But as we start to progress, you're going to create some cool body segmentation here. And you'll really get more of that larva look to start. Remember to increase your uh, ribbing as you move forward. Because as you get towards the thorax of the bug, you will have a little bit progressor larger, larger body segments. Doesn't make a huge difference. I mean, at the end of the day, these fish probably have three seconds to decide to eat this or not. But, uh, you know, if you want to impress your friends, that's a huge key. I'm going to go ahead and fold this material back over itself and get ready for the next body segment. Uh, I keep the front pretty basic. I don't use anything that's too wild. It's just peacock black ice dub, which is ICE283. It's got a cool reflectiveness. It's kind of buggy all in of itself, and I've never met a fish that doesn't like that or UV ice stub in brown. Um, so those are probably two of my favorite colors, and they show up on a huge quantity of my patterns. 
So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and create just the little first segmentation, which is more of the thorax of these free living caddis. And I do wrap over the top um, of the dubbing to where I'm going to create my next body segment. Um, it just makes my transitions a little bit easier and it works out for me. It's just one of my little style points that I do that makes my life easier in the tying bench. So I'll go ahead and fold back and lock those wraps down. So yeah, that's, you know, about where I want to create the head or whatever it is. Next up, more peacock black eye stuff. Create a nice thin dubby noodle. Doesn't have to be too bulky. Um, this type of a, you know, caddis kind of taper at both ends. So there's not like a huge head section sitting on a skinny, you know, caddis. A kind of a plump in the middle, taper off at both ends. You can see I'm pulling a little bit of tension here and that's helping me to thin that material out as I pull it down to secure for the last head section. Now the true head where the mouth would be and everything like that, that's actually what I'm creating with this thread. Uh, the 50 doesn't build very fast, so it'll seem like I'm just wrapping forever pointlessly, but I'm just actually trying not to, uh, you know, leave it too narrow there. Uh, the thread is white. I have uh, these killer set of pins and that's actually what I do to color this. So as you can see, special black marker. And I'm gonna go ahead and color the top of the abdomen darker because there is a color change on the natural insect. And you can see just by, from the dubbing noodle, we already have a really cool looking uh, leg situation going on. There's no question that fish are gonna eat this fly. Uh, this is equally at home underneath an indicator rig as I imagine it would be on a European style or high stick rig. <clears throat> and you can see I didn't quite progress into the second section yet. I'm gonna just do them separately. It's my own little, uh, my own little thing that I do. And I do go a little bit back into the body. It doesn't really matter. Um, you don't have to do that, but it just gives a little bit of extra bond. It's also going to lock in uh, those initial mono wraps that at the end, even though they've been wrapped over about a hundred times. Lastly, I just jump in there and take my dubbing brush and get a little grumpy. And I give it a little bit of a trim to make the legs somewhat believable, but not too realistic. Um, it still maintains a high level of suggestivity in this pattern. Um, anyways, that's the uh, little radical Raiko. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Try some out, it's a ton of different colors. Thanks for watching.